Hey guys, Zen here, and Crimson Heist has landed, and Year 6 has officially started for Rainbow Six Siege. This is the turning point, but there have been so many announcements and things promised that it can be a challenge to stay completely up to speed. And so, we're going over 9 of the biggest secrets and important features of this new season, and jumping into the next big update. We're also going to speak on what's not a part of Season 1 in Year 6, because there could be a lot of players overextending here, and so this one is stacked. Remember to get subscribed, and click all for those notifications, and let's begin this one. Now, I want to thank Ubisoft for sponsoring sponsoring this video and tell you a bit about the brand new Crimson Heist Battle Pass that's running from March 16th through May 24th. So before you kick off year 6, be sure to check out the Battle Pass and earn some free gear just for playing the game. New to this year's Battle Pass is the ability to instantly unlock Floris by simply upgrading to the premium track, and you still get the benefit of unlocking all the loot available through all 100 tiers. Now personally, out of everything on offer, I've just gotta go with Castle's new uniform and headgear as my favorite of the bunch. These Battle Pass skins are getting closer and closer to full on elites and they even gave this man a pair of orange airpods to go with the outfit and i'm all for the hype beast fashion sense but guys you can check out the crimson heist battle pass with the link at the top of the description and you'll have all the details you need to get going and so with that let's get it started so this begins from the top literally crimson heist one of the first secrets you may not be aware of is that this is the first ever season drop that is entitled operation going back to the very beginning every single time rainbow six siege releases new content it is referred to as an operation operation skull Rain, Operation Red Crow, Operation Burnt Horizon, and even as recent as Operation Neon Dawn have all been unified and called Operation to keep consistent. But here, with the beginning of year six, Ubisoft and the developers are doubling down on the new identity for Siege, and alongside the new logo and key art, from here on out, you will never see Rainbow Six Siege content being referred to as an operation. It's one of those changes that at first glance, you might not even notice, but throughout the messaging and even marketing for the content, Operation is out, and it's a bit like saying goodbye to an old friend. Second up is a really meaningful buff to Mute. So one of the biggest changes of the last season was the reduction to the runout timer. Defenders only have just one second to get a little cheeky before they're spotted and it all goes left. But one way to guarantee to hold a defender off is to place a claymore in a popular runout spot or fire an air jab in the area as a last resort counter. This meta has been tried and true with almost no answer to it besides maybe throwing up an impact grenade. However, Mute will now disrupt both air jabs and claymores with one of his jammers and it's a new powerful way to fight back against this utility. If there's one thing that I'm personally looking forward to in Crimson Heist is this upcoming mute meta, because not only does he now have this game-changing ability, he's also one of the most productive counters to Floris and his RCE Rotero gadget. Now, additionally to this change, the attackers won't be totally in the blind. I don't think it would be super fair if something like an air jab was jammed and you couldn't tell, and so Ubisoft is adding the same kind of static effect around these gadgets as you'll see with an ace charge, so it'll be apparent that you have to deal with a jammer. Mute has probably been the most underrated defender that Rainbow Six Siege has ever had, and I think with this upgrade, and depending on how viable Forest becomes, I think he has a big opportunity to be a star pick this season. There's never really been anything wrong with him. Ever since they gave him the SMG 11 and added more and more gadgets that he counters, there's always been reasons to pick him. I just think with his inability to trick effectively and how easy it can be to destroy his gadget, people just pass over him. But again, things are different now, and he is menacing in Crimson Heist, and so if you want to make things challenging for the attackers, show Mute some well-deserved love. Third is a complete overhaul to the Newcomer playlist, and there's a lot to like. So, the new Newcomer will feature five familiar maps. Oregon, Clubhouse, Coastline, Bank, and Cafe, as well as one map that'll rotate each season. This makes it so that the entire pool of maps in the playlist is also always available in rank, and so instead of forcing a new player to learn a bunch of random maps that may or may not be the most balanced, they're experiencing the game on maps that were designed to be competitive. Now, each of the maps will also only feature two bomb sites to play on, and only one objective will be played during the whole match. That may seem limiting, but from the perspective of someone new, it allows them to really learn that one site in the surrounding areas and get comfortable with some of the most popular objectives you'll find in rank. And lastly, they're reducing the timer of the round to three minutes, which is exactly what it is in ranked in both newcomer and quick match, also increasing the time to plant to seven seconds up from the five it used to be in those playlists and adding the new carrier options where the operator most likely to plant will get the diffuser if no one takes it. Altogether, it's sounding a whole lot like ranked and that's super super important because that's the end game in Siege and it's smarter to point a new player in that direction over simply learning the fundamentals of the game. Look, if Siege wants to continue to grow, then it must onboard new players and the biggest problem this game has with doing that is the daunting task of learning it. It really isn't that Siege is too hard, it's just too hard to learn and so progressing new players into ranked allows them to avoid the hurdle of having to learn a whole new set of rules once they move out of casual. Number 4 is Flores, the newest operator from Argentina. Now we're already well aware of his ability 
abilities. He's a two-speed, he has the RCE Rotero, and he carries the AR-33. But it's how incredibly useful he is to the attackers now that he's here, and that he may even be a better option to Thatcher when it comes to support. He's been compared to Twitch, and it's understandable. They both have a drone that has the ability to knock out defender utility, but I honestly have to give the leg up to Floris here, because I think he just operates more consistently. Ever since they nerfed Twitch's drone, made it louder, and gave it lights, it's no longer the low-key silent cruiser it used to be. It's pretty obvious rolling around, and once she starts tasing things, she only gets three shots before a long timer pops up, and by then, the drone is usually gone. Floris, on the other hand, has similar utility, but in one shot can knock out almost everything on a wall, and has the added ability to jump, which I think is just a massive advantage over the shock drone. It does have its limits, mainly with the timer, but ultimately, this gadget is incredibly strong. It can take out things like deployable shields and even castle barricades on top of the usual bandit batteries and ADS. He gets four of them and a normal drone, and so I just see Floris as a must pick in Crimson Heist. Given that Thatcher is always banned and Kali is so niche, Floris, I think, is ace in the support category. And so, yeah, Floris is one to pay close attention to and one of the best attackers to start the season with. Next up at number five is a very specific adjustment to Vigil. And so they've added a new feature where you no longer unlean when you toggle on his ERC-7 gadget. And for some, this is big. Now, I know it may sound kind of unimportant, but positioning is critical and your silence in the round can be everything. And I can't explain how many times I've heard a drone cruising towards me as Vigil. I toggle on my gadget and they hear me go from leaning to unleaning. And trust me, guys, I get it. Does this really happen? Yes. It definitely happens, and it's led to being spotted because of that tiny amount of audio when you shift around. Being able to turn on your ERC-7 audio-free is an incredible way to stay stealthy and also use your gadget's utility at its best. Is it still smart to move if a drone is circling you and waiting for your timer to run out? Yeah, get out of there. But if they're not sure, not giving them any audio and only static to work with is a much better option here. It just makes using Vigil more comfortable, and if you didn't know, well, now you do, so drop a like. At 6, Capkin is also upgraded, but it's it's a bit more subtle, and the only way I can explain it is to compare it to the old version of Wooden Barricades. So, the devs have made it more consistent, just more ease of use, I suppose, when you're deploying an EDD. I play a lot of Capkin, and if there's one small issue I always have, is sometimes when you go to put up an EDD, you'll just move away from the wall and have to go back up to it and start all over. It's almost like you didn't hit the sweet spot, so they make you redo it. Now, you'll never have this issue. You'll walk up to a doorway or window, hold down the gadget, and it's up every time. Wooden Barricades were very similar in this way. Before the update a few seasons back, you could hit a barricade dead on and no wood would fall. Like, you could even hit it twice sometimes and get no real feedback, and it caused people to be taken out, and above all, an immense amount of frustration. For those of you who are new, you've never had to deal with this. You just hit a barricade and the wood falls as it should, and it's absolutely lovely. So hey, maybe I'm speaking only to Capkin mains at this point, but he feels good. Like, perfect. Seven here is something I've been wanting to talk about for a long time, but the new seasonal weapon skin for Crimson Heist. It's called Thermal Antipodes, and in my opinion, it is the best seasonal weapon skin in the game next to Black Ice. Its flavor text reads, experience two extremes with the seasonal weapon skin Thermal Antipode. With its striking design, you'll be sure to stand out on the battlefield and turn players cold. So I think Ubisoft is well aware of the Black Ice craze. As of now, it can only be received out of an alpha pack, and it requires just pure luck to get your hands on some. Now, it is a universal weapon skin, but you only get one weapon per alpha pack, and so those who are lucky enough to get it have to hope to add it to the collection, because there are always duplicates. But now is your chance to get one of the best new seasonal weapon skins for every single one of your weapons with Thermal Antipodes and Crimson Heist. Once the season ends, it's gone, and so everyone who joins after Crimson Heist will wonder how you got your hands on such a spicy paint job. People have waited literally five years for this, basically ever since Black Ice, and so I guess my only question is which one is really king, Black Ice or Thermal Antipode? Next up at number eight, is a quick update, but there are new voice actors for IQ and Capital. Now, new voices for existing operators isn't anything new in Rainbow Six Siege. Both Mira and Tachanka have replaced voice actors, and it's of course a natural part of the industry. People get new opportunities, and voice actors are usually incredibly busy and play multiple roles at once, and so as a community, R6 sends thanks to the old voices of Capital and IQ, and of course welcomes the new talent. This is another area where Siege doubles down on its new vision and is moving forward with as much consistency as possible. Finally, I wanted to finish up with what's not here for this season. When they dropped the reveal, they also talked about a ton of other huge updates that were coming throughout year six, and so I wanted to clear the air with a little rapid fire. So, for what's not here yet, the rework to Goyo and Malusi, the change to Mira and Maestro, attacker repick, after death activities, the full version of the reputation system, the all new look to the operator album and weapon customization screens, the buff to Nolk, and the fully polished and complete version of streamer mode. To be clear, these are updates for the entirety of year six, and will 
roll out over time. But as for what is here now, it's solid. And it's a heavy new step for a game that's in its sixth year. And so that's our video, guys. Here's another thank you to Ubisoft for sponsoring the video. And guys, remember to go explore the new Battle Pass with the link in the description. It's ongoing from March 16th through May 24th, and there's plenty of free loot to pick up, like this sophisticated headgear for zero. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe with notifications if you're new. Hey. Thanks for watching. I'm out.